Gentlemen, we have called you together to inform you that we are going to overthrow the United States government. You still think that jet fuel brought down the World Trade Center? Does anybody else see a problem here? If the government has nothing to hide, why are they so afraid to answer a few questions? This story does not add up. Good evening and welcome to the Friday, September 30th, 2011 edition of InfoWars Nightly News. I'm Aaron Dyke sitting in for Alex while he's out on assignment. Uh, but first, the news. Two U.S. born terrorists were killed in the CIA led drone strike. That would be top Al Qaeda leader Anwar al Awlaki, the double agent who dined at the Pentagon, admittedly and was now assassinated, the first U.S. citizen to be targeted by predator drones killed in Yemen, according to official reports. However, he has been reported dead more than five times before. We have the report from Steve Watson, no more Pentagon dinners, Al-Qaeda leader killed again, and it gets into how there were many untimely reports of his death. So with more on that, we take you now to a special report on the life and times of CIA Pentagon asset Anwar Awalaki. A U.S. counterterrorism official says American forces targeted al-Qaeda cleric Anwar al-Awlaki's convoy in Yemen with a drone and jet attack and believe he's been killed. The Yemeni government says the airstrike happened near the eastern town of Kashef. Al-Awlaki is on a U.S. kill or capture list. The cleric, known for his fiery anti-American rhetoric, has been suspected of ties to the Fort Hood attack and the attempted Christmas Day airliner bombing in 2009. The Pakistani American who pleaded guilty to the May 2010 Times Square car bombing attempt told interrogators he was inspired by Al Awlaki after making contact over the internet. In July, U.S. Defense Secretary Leon Panetta said the Yemeni American was a priority target. The Yemen Defense Ministry, when they first came out with this report, guys, uh, about an hour and ten minutes ago, said it was their doing, that they were involved, that, that they were the ones that, that got him. First of all, what is the hard, confirm identification of it? Where is the body? And, and what are we doing with that body? And so far, uh, it is Friday Prayers Day, so uh, Yemeni government officials are kind of out of contact in this time period. But we FBI documents obtained as part of an ongoing Fox investigation state that Anwar al-Awlaki, now the first American on the CIA's killer capture list, was a lunch guest of the military. After being vetted by a Defense Department employee, quote, Alaki was invited to and attended a luncheon at the Pentagon in the Secretary of the Army's Office of Government Counsel. Alaki, who was the imam at this mosque in Falls Church, Virginia, was interviewed at least four times by the FBI in the first week after 9-11 because of his previous contact with three of the hijackers who struck the Pentagon. This information was apparently never reviewed by the Pentagon. An Army spokesman insisted that the lunch was not an Army event, but rather it was sponsored by the Office of the Secretary of Defense. He's a controlled asset, and of course it's not a matter of failure to connect the dots. We're hearing all about the unconnected dots. No, this is the desired outcome. Let me just point out a couple of other things here. Uh, we're told that uh, the, uh, the, this uh, alleged uh, bomber, right, the Nicker bomber, whatever they call him, uh, he was in contact with this character Awlaki in Yemen, and of course, he, this Awlaki, I call him Awlaki the CIA lackey. Awlaki the lackey, and remember, he's a CIA lackey. He's a double agent, a triple agent, if you want. He is used uh, as a kind of beacon to recruit patsies across the world, and they can always sheep dip somebody like Major Hassan if they want to say, you're linked to Al-Qaeda, they just have you exchange a few emails with this Awlaki, and that's what he's good for, right? He goes back to 9-11 and Hani Hanjour. So this, this guy, is uh, he's, he's, a, he's a U.S. agent under whatever layers of, of garb that he's got. The other thing is, how was this uh, young uh, patsy, uh, Omar Farouk Mutalab, how was he radicalized? And I think we're getting some pretty good indications that it's this Brixton Mosque, Finsbury Mosque, Access in London, the school for patsies, the, the British patsies. Which, patsy. by the way, six months ago, I remember it, you predicted we'd see plane bombings out of that mosque. It, this is not so hard to do. Remember Richard Reed, Richard Reed, mentally retarded vagrant who was sleeping on the floor of Brixton Mosque, I think. He was given the same PETN uh, explosive by somebody, so that's what this, this uh, Omar Farouk was given then, allegedly, once again, in 
in Yemen. So you can see it, it all it fits together and it, it all comes from these same these same places. There are reports today that the Christmas Day body bomber met with an American-born radical cleric, Anwar al-Awlaki. He's believed to be living in Yemen, al-Awlaki is. He's not only been linked to al-Qaeda in the past, but he reportedly exchanged emails with the suspected Fort Hood shooter, Nadal Hassan, before that shooting massacre in Texas. Now again, Anwar al-Awlaki, the CIA lackey, as Webster Tarpley appropriately calls him, is connected to all these foiled terror plots. He's connected to, as the clip mentions, three, at least three, of the 9-11 hijackers. He was interviewed by the FBI more than four times, and yet he was invited to the Pentagon only months after 9-11 to meet with top brass. That really should tell a huge story about what's going on in this phony war on terror. Now, on the other side of the same coin, you have today in the news, or this week in the news, rather, Rezwan Ferdas, the man accused of trying to blow up the Capitol and Pentagon using a remote-controlled airplane, and he was once again admittedly set up by the FBI. They provocateured him, lured him into extremist action, uh, gave him what appeared to be the bomb and the other weapons, including phony AK-47s and so forth. And this is the pattern we have seen repeatedly, especially since 9-11, but also long before it, where the FBI is directly behind setting up uh, random patsies they find on the streets, these mentally uh, low iq people and so-called extremists to use them to advance the public agenda so the public believes these plots are always happening. Meanwhile, the FBI is admittedly behind them. Even Geraldo was on Fox News talking about how bogus this whole paradigm is. And remember, too, the FBI was admittedly behind the 1993 World Trade Center bombing cooking the bomb, giving it to those people, and encouraging them to carry out their attempted act of terrorism, which killed four people. Let's go to this clip now. They say that just today, the operatives, the undercover operatives, gave Ferdas material that was supposed to be the explosive material C4. They say only a small amount of it was the real thing. A law enforcement official also tells us they gave him AK-47s and grenades, but those were not functional. We have to stress one very important point, Wolf. A U.S. law enforcement official CNN spoke with today said there was no danger to the public since undercover operatives were involved very early on. There's at least 20 plots I've read about where the FBI admittedly used entrapment techniques. These people may have hated the country. They may have even been radical in their minds, but they had no means to carry out the things they were accused of. They only became dangerous once they were set up through these FBI systems. And it's all just a fraud meant to trick the public. And we've had enough of it. We need to learn what's going on and say no to this entire phony war on terrorism because they are clamping down on our freedoms as ordinary. Americans.